Let's go. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you clicked on today's video. We are going to be attempting to swap my phone screen time with reading for a whole week. I did this video sometime last year i think sometime in the summer and then before that i had did it like once the year before i always love doing this type of video when i notice i'm just spending so much time on my phone that it's just getting to the point that i know it's not healthy so your girl has been spending so much time on her phone and we are going to fix that problem this week by swapping it out with reading not to mention i've also been in like a reading slump since the beginning of this year i'm just like i don't know guys i think i'm just like burnt out. I've just been in the biggest reading slump ever and I have not wanted to pick up any books. I have not been in the mood to read. I'm hoping that this video kind of gets me back into it. I'm hoping we can pick up and read some fun new books and hopefully the goal is for this video to one, stop spending so much time on my phone because it is not healthy. I'm wasting my life away staring at my screen all day. We can do that. There's so much life to live. We gotta live our life. And then two, I want to get out of this reading slump. I don't know. I I also feel like because I haven't been reading a lot, I'm not like the happiest that I usually am because reading makes me so happy. We're gonna fix this little dilemma I've been having in today's video. I'm so very excited. So to start off, I usually like to go through and kind of talk analytics. I totally expose myself to you guys because I tell you guys exactly how much time I spend on my phone. It's horrid. We are doing January 14th to the 21st. This was by far one of the worst weeks weeks for me phone wise and mental health wise see I feel like when I spend so much time on my phone it also affects my mental health I feel like it definitely correlates and the total amount of time that I spent on my phone 29 hours and 31 minutes That's over one full day on my phone. I wasted one full day of my life staring at my phone screen. That is just crazy. It looks like my average amount of time every single day on my phone was hovering around four hours. It doesn't seem that bad when you look at it from that stance, but at the same time, that's four hours out of my day that I was just scrolling on Instagram, YouTube, whatever it may be. My most used app was Instagram with a total of eight hours and 42 minutes. What am I doing? What am I doing on Instagram? I think I'm just reading a bunch of book quotes and looking at pretty books and special editions. That's probably what I'm doing on Instagram. The second most used app was my messages app. I spent two hours and 51 minutes in that, which I feel like with messages, that doesn't really count because that's like the whole point of a phone to use it to communicate with other people, call other people. So I feel like that's not like too bad. TikTok was two hours and 30 minutes. And I know so many people spend so much of their time on TikTok, but I'm not one of those people. So the fact that I spent two and a half hours on it is a little concerning. You YouTube was two hours and 29 minutes, which totally understandable. I love YouTube. It's another app I don't necessarily count as like wasting my time with just because it would be the same as me sitting down, relaxing, watching TV. I don't really count YouTube as like a bad app. Mostly Instagram, TikTok. We even have Facebook with an hour and 35 minutes, which I think is really weird because like I don't use Facebook or post on it, but I have been helping out with the social media for this hockey team. So that's probably like where my time is coming from. Instagram is the culprit, not good. So for those of you who haven't seen one of these videos on my channel before, or if you haven't seen them at all from other booktubers you watch, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go day by day. We're gonna look at the amount of time I spent on my phone, and then we're gonna swap that out with reading. So we're gonna start off with Monday, January 15th. I spent a total of four hours and 37 minutes on my phone. My most used app, naturally. Instagram with two hours and 13 minutes. TikTok with 33 minutes. YouTube with 21 minutes. Facebook with 16 minutes. Four hours and 37 minutes isn't like the worst thing ever, especially for reading. Like I sit down and read for hours and hours and hours sometimes. But to start it off, today is Monday, so we're gonna be swapping our phone screen time with reading today for four hours and 37 minutes. And we are going to get out of this reading slump. We're gonna get off our 
phone. I wish I could swap my phone screen time with like getting outside right now, but it's still so cold here in Buffalo. Guys, I can't. I can't with the cold right now. We are going to head in to the library and pick out our first read of the vlog. I'm also going to change into something a little cozier. I am like still dressed in like my sweater and jeans from the day and I want to be cozy because we're going to be reading for almost five hours. So let's go do that. Okay, much, much better. I actually wear this crew neck in like every single video of mine, so don't judge. <laughs> Anyways, we are going to pick out our first book of today's reading vlog. I had an idea of what I wanted to start this reading vlog off with, but I actually ended up reading like a few chapters of the book a week ago and I just like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It, I, you know what? I know what it is. It's because I'm in a reading slump. So I picked up this book and I read a few chapters and I just couldn't get into it and it wasn't retaining like the words and information I was reading. So decided to put it down and was hoping to start this video off with it. But I think just to save like myself and my mental health and again, like the whole main goal of this vlog is to help me get out of a reading slump. Thinking we're gonna start off with something a little bit more easygoing, maybe do a silly little romance because I've been reading so much fantasy lately and I am loving the fantasy genre guys. Like I am turning into the biggest fan fantasy girly, but I feel like I'm getting to the point where I might need to take a little break from it. I think we're going to start off with like a cutie, silly little romance today. I think I'm going to start with Indigo Ridge by Debney Perry because there's kind of like a little side plot to the book and it's a mystery and I feel like that might be really, really fun. So it's not just total romance. There's like a little action in here possibly. Also, if you guys want to see me like build my dream library, definitely go check out the video because it was such a fun one. So our first read of the vlog is Indigo Ridge by Debney Perry. This is book one in the Eden series and I've been recommended this series so much from you guys because I am obsessed with the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver and so many of you had told me that this series is very similar vibes to the Chestnut Spring series. It's a small town trope. There's enemies to lovers, friends to lovers in here. There's a lot of cowboy aesthetic and country aesthetic in here. So we are finally going to give it a try today and we're going to start with book one. It tells the story of Winslow Covington and she basically becomes the new chief of police in the small town of Quincy, Montana. She moves to Quincy and before she actually starts working as the new chief of police, she has a one night stand with a local, which she doesn't realize is a local. She thought that he was just kind of passing through town. And it also turns out that she slept with Griffin Eden, who is a part of the Eden family. The Eden family is very well known and popular in town, very similar to the Eden boys in the Chestnut Springs series, which I think is so weird that they are are the Edens and in Chestnut Springs they're the Edens. Anyways, Griffin Eden is a part of the Eden family that is very well known, a very popular family in town. Everyone has a lot of respect for them and loves them. The brand new chief of police just slept with the oldest son and she's already really nervous. She's very young to be taking on this position and she's also a woman so she feels like she's already gonna get a lot of criticism and backlash from the public so oh and then like in the middle of it all there's like a mystery in it I guess because there's a body that turns up. So there's like a murder mystery that we're gonna try and uncover throughout the whole story. I already feel like I'm gonna really like this book because one, we have like a badass female main character, which I absolutely love. Two, it's a small town trope. I'm such a sucker for a good small town trope. I feel like they make for the best love stories for some reason. And then we're also getting a fun little enemies to lovers in here, I think. Anyways, we're gonna jump right into Indigo Ridge. I'm actually really excited. And this is the first time I've been excited to jump into a book in a while so this is this is exciting <laughs> So we have a little under two hours to go. We've been reading for two hours and 
42 minutes? I don't know. I think that's right, but we've been reading for over two hours. We have a little under two hours to go before we finish up for today. I'm on chapter 13, page 167, and we are actually flying through this. I think I'm almost to the halfway mark, and so far... It's not that I'm not enjoying this. I am. I think it's really cute. I'm living for the small town trope. I'm living for like that country cowboy aesthetic. But for some reason, it just feels like something is missing for me in this. So we saw Winslow come to Quincy. She had a one night stand with a local. Then she starts as the chief of police. They re-meet again through family and they are just in total shock when they meet again because they slept together. And there's a little bit of going back and forth, a little bit of an enemies to love kind of. I feel like it's not really an enemies to lovers. They like don't really like each other for a little bit. Then I feel like it's really insta-lovey, but like they don't want to admit it to themselves even though they like keep coming back together. This is really cute. I like the mystery aspect of it. I think it's really interesting and I honestly have like so many theories about like who did what and how it all happened. I feel like the way the story sets it up is they want you to think it's someone and it would make sense that it would be that someone because like all the evidence leads to them, but I just know it can't. It can't can't be that person. Like they couldn't have been the one to actually do it. That's my theory though so far. But really it's just like a lot of going back and forth. I think the characters are really cute. I'm not like swooning over Griffin or swooning over Winslow. So there have been like a lot of really sweet little moments between the two of them that I have been like living for. But I don't know. I just feel like there's something like missing from this story which is really weird. I feel like I could use like a little bit more detail about some of the characters to maybe better understand them as well as like more like feelings or emotions from them because I'm like reading about all these different characters but I feel like I don't really know them and I know it's like only the first book in the series and I know as I go like through the other books I'll probably get a better understanding of every single character and they'll grow on me and I'll fall in love with them but like right now I just feel like there's something missing and I kind of wish there was something more to the story. Nonetheless it's really cute. It's short and sweet. Again I really like the mystery aspect to it. I think it makes it a lot of fun and without the mystery I feel like this would be a really really boring book but the mystery is like what's keeping me sucked in right now. We have an hour and 55 minutes to finish the day up with. I'm hoping we can maybe maybe almost finish this book. I feel like I should get pretty close to like the end of it today but I do feel like we're gonna hit a pretty pivotal part in the story soon so I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited to find out who did what and who's involved with what and yeah I'm just like not like in love with it but I also don't don't hate it if that makes sense. We're gonna start the timer, we're gonna keep going and see what happens. The timer just went off. We just wrapped up our four hours and 37 minutes. It's at 10 p.m. and I can't believe it, but I'm actually getting so tired. Usually I can stay up like so much later, but I'm actually tired. We made it to chapter 20, page 261. I think we only have like a couple chapters left and at least like 100 pages. So we have 100 pages to read tomorrow when we start up the timer again. I have to say like... This is getting like so much better. I know in the last clip I had only been almost halfway through it and I was kind of just not bored but like on the cusp of being bored. I feel like there was just like something missing from the story. I wasn't really in love with it or obsessed with it and I feel like the characters were just lacking so much detail and description. Like I don't know how to say it but the story is just lacking something for me. But I have to say like in the last hundred pages it has gotten so much better. I feel like we're really starting to feel like the love between Griffin and Winslow. You can tell they care about one another but they're both like nervous to admit it and like take that next big step especially with how they kind of started off. I also really like how Griffin's character has been changing throughout the whole story because in the beginning he kind of started off as like almost like an anti-lover kind of guy. He's too busy. He's really just looking for like friends with benefits so it's been really cool to see his character development. I do think we are a 
about to hit like the problem probably in the next chapter or the chapter after i could just sense it i know something is gonna mess up everything that's going on right now because it always happens like that when the story just seems so perfect and everyone's happy there's gonna be a rock thrown into it it has gotten so much better i feel like in the beginning when i started reading this i was so nervous i was like oh my gosh this is gonna be like a two-star read part of it is because i've been reading so much fantasy lately so it's really hard for me to like go from fantasy back to like silly little romance books because there's so much detail and like information and just like so much happens in fantasy books whereas with romance books like we don't always get that because it's not always necessary but now like my mind is just like fixated on certain characters and like I have all these questions about all these characters that I know I probably will find out the answers to eventually especially if I continue the series there's just like little things that are lacking in this but but nonetheless, I'm definitely enjoying it now. It's so cute. I'm loving the little romance in here. I don't think I like it as much as I like the Chestnut Spring series. Like the Chestnut Spring series has my heart. It's one of my favorite, favorite series ever. It's definitely gonna be hard to top it, obviously, but I'm excited to solve the mystery tomorrow. I still don't know, like who did it. I really don't. I feel like the story is pointing to a specific person, but I like refuse to believe that it's this person that did it. And and other than that, I have no idea who else would have done it, to be honest. Whenever I read mysteries or like even in fantasy books, if there's like a little mystery in them, I never know. It's so funny because you guys will comment on my videos and be like, how did you not know that? How did you not guess it? And I don't know. The answer is I don't know. But we are going to call it a night day one of swapping our phone screen time with reading. I actually feel so much better, to be honest, like to be reading again and not spending so much time on my phone. I really, really needed this. And although this is isn't like my favorite book ever and it's not gonna be i'm gonna say it now i can tell this isn't gonna be a five star for me it's still like getting me excited to start picking up books again and reading so this has been very successful so far even though we've only done one day but we are gonna call it a night i'm gonna take off the makeup kind of wrap up get ready for bed and we will pick it up tomorrow we're gonna finish up this book uncover the mystery find out who did it and then we're gonna jump in to our next one which i kind of have an idea of what i want to read tomorrow it's a book that I've been talking about for so long about starting and I haven't so I will see you guys in the a.m happy tuesday everybody it is at 6 17 p.m i kind of spent my day filming other videos and cleaning up the apartment chris has hockey i thought we would spend this time kind of reading until we have to leave for his game for tuesday our goal is to read for two hours and 49 minutes which isn't like a lot at all i feel like i average like two to three hours of reading every day so almost three hours of reading is like no big deal for me but i'm hoping we can finish up indigo ridge today i think we only have like a hundred pages left and when we left off last night I just had a feeling that something crazy was going to happen in the next chapter. So I'm super excited to see it. We're on chapter 20. It's Winslow's point of view. And we only have a few chapters left. So we should be able to finish this one up. We're going to hop in to our next book of the vlog, which I'm really, really excited about. I've been seeing so many cute little edits of the series lately and cute little book quotes from that book specifically. So I'm really, really excited to start it and share it with you guys. We're going to start our timer for two hours and 49 minutes. And we're just going to hop right into it. We finally finished Indigo Ridge. We stopped at the one hour and 15 minute mark. So I just have this much more to read tonight. I'm really happy that I finally like started the series because I definitely want to continue it. So many of you have recommended it to me and said that it just gives off like all my favorite types of vibes when it comes to romance books. And the fact that so many of you compared this series to the Chestnut Spring series. Absolutely love that series. You guys already know. It just makes me want to read more and dive into it. I think for a reading, I'm gonna land on a three star just because it's not like a story i feel like i was super obsessed with the characters i wasn't like swooning over i don't know what it was about winslow and griffin but something about their story just like wasn't my all-time favorite they were super cute and there were a lot of cute moments between the two of them but i feel like it just wasn't a couple that i was madly obsessed with i still really really liked it i really enjoyed it i'm excited to move on in the series and see like how the found family kind of develops in this because i could 
could see a found family maybe in the works. As for the mystery aspect, I really, really enjoyed it and it made this whole book so much better in my opinion. I just wish we had more. Like I feel like we hit the end and we solved the mystery and you know, like the big bang happened basically. I don't know, I almost felt like underwhelmed. I feel like if maybe I read this book a year ago, it probably would have been like a four star for me, but it was just like, it was okay. It's not my favorite romance ever, but it's not a romance that I necessarily disliked. And I find a lot of the time when starting a series, the first book can either be a hit or miss, but if I keep going in the series, they tend to get better. I tend to fall more in love with the characters and past characters. So like I said, I'm excited to keep going in the series, excited to see what happens next, excited to see the found family and hopefully revisit old characters like Griffin and Winslow. Not too bad to start off the reading vlog. Being able to complete a book, even though it wasn't like one of my favorites, still feels really good. And I'm excited to hop in to our next book. We have Kiss the Sky by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is book one in the Callaway Sister series, but it intertwines with the Addicted series, which so many of you are probably already familiar with that series. I've been putting this series off. I don't know why I hear so many people say amazing things about it. Everyone loves the Callaway sisters. They say like they're the best part of the whole series. So I'm excited to finally be jumping into it. When I read Lily and Lowe's story in the Addicted series, I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would or as much as other people enjoyed it. And I think it's just because it's such a different type of love story. We're following two main characters who are both battling addiction. I had just never read like anything like that before. So I feel like that's why I didn't necessarily fall in love with them and their stories. But I do hear a lot of people say as well, like when you read the Callaway sister books, you fall in love with Lily and Lo more because you get to see different point of views of them. So I'm super excited to jump into this. This is all about Rose and Connor. Rose is the oldest Callaway sister, I believe. And we briefly meet her and Connor in the Addicted series. Connor quickly becomes one of Lowe's best friends. And Rose is Lily's overprotective older sister. And something that I really love about Rose and Connor that I've just been looking forward to is that they're like academic rivals. And there's a little bit of an enemies to lovers between the two of them in the Addicted series. So I only know a little bit about this book. I know that Rose has like her own fashion line, but it's basically kind of going downhill. It hasn't been doing as well as she wanted it to. And it kind of has to do with like Lily and Lowe's situation. Their families are like super, super rich. So they're also very much in the public eye. There's just like a whole bunch of stuff that goes into it. So in order to save her fashion line and hopefully turn it into a successful business like she's always dreamed of, she basically agrees to do a reality TV show with her whole family, like with Lily and Daisy, then also with like Lo and Connor. Kind of gives off like the Kardashian vibe and how they do a reality show. So Rose basically agrees to do a reality show where her sisters and the boys live in a house together, I think for like six months to a year and they're being filmed 24 seven. There's just like a whole bunch of crazy stuff I think that's gonna happen in this and I'm really, really excited about it. I love that's an academic rival. I also love that Rose is kind of like the ice queen in this story. So I feel like her character is just gonna be so interesting to kind of dissect and to see like her character development. So we have an hour and 15 minutes to go up for the rest of tonight's reading. We are gonna start Kiss the Sky. I'm so, so excited about it. I have very high hopes that this could be a high rating for me. And that's just because I've seen so many people rave about the Callaway sisters. So I'm like so excited. We are gonna hop right into it and see what happens. <laughs> I sound weird to you guys. I sound really, really weird to myself right now. Today is Thursday and we are continuing the vlog. We read for a total of three hours and 24 minutes yesterday and I didn't talk at all. I didn't vlog at all because I got really, really sick and I ended up losing my voice completely. So I couldn't like say anything. Like I literally couldn't even understand myself. So I just read the whole day. We started Kiss the Sky by Krista 
and Becca Ritchie, book one of the Callaway Sister series, Rose and Connors, big entrance, I guess you could say. So I read up to chapter 28, page 262 yesterday. I feel like with this book, I'm like not reading it that fast and it could have to do with the fact that I am getting like super sick right now, but I just feel like I've been reading it at a super slow pace, which is kind of weird for me. I can't remember if I read the Addicted series at like a super slow pace or not. So far, we are literally more than halfway through the book already. I literally just spent all day yesterday reading and relaxing, trying to get my voice back. And now we're here. We're on to Thursday and we are continuing the reading vlog. I was actually super proud of myself yesterday because I really spent the majority of my day in bed just reading and relaxing and I didn't pick up my phone like at all. I didn't spend that much time on social media and I'm just like so proud of myself because that's the whole point of this vlog. Anyways, today is Thursday. We are going to be reading for a total of four hours and 49 minutes. Naturally, the culprit is Instagram with 45 minutes and then I spent 45 minutes in my messages app, which I don't know how. And then I also spent 42 minutes in the camera app, which I also don't know how I did that. TikTok was 34 minutes, which I know to most people isn't like the worst thing ever. But again, I'm not like a TikTok girly. I don't really use it that often. So 34 minutes on TikTok is a lot for me. We're going to be reading for four hours and 49 minutes today. I am hoping to finish this book up and then start our next read. So far in Kiss the Sky though, I'm actually eating this whole book up. I'm loving it so much more than the Addicted series and I have to say like I'm falling in love with Lily and Lo as well which is really nice because in the Addicted series it was really really hard to like root for them because they were annoying me so much. But I feel like in this book because we're seeing them from a different point of view it's like really helping me better understand them and their characters. I'm like falling in love with them so it makes me really happy and I feel like when we jump back into the Addicted series I'm just gonna have like a new appreciation for the characters so I really like that part. I really love the found family in here. We're really getting an insight into all of the characters and I love that so so much. The found family trope is like it's like a must for me when it comes to romances. There's just something that makes me so happy. I'm loving the fun family trope. I'm loving Connor and Rose's dynamic. Rose and Connor are so sweet and I'm gonna relate this to fantasy really quick. Please bear with me but Rose and Connor give off like Nesta and Cassian vibes from the Akatar series. I'm like loving it so much. I feel like that's why I'm loving Connor and Rose so much. It's because Rose is reminding me of Nesta. It just makes my heart so happy. And I feel like I literally relate every book I read now to a Sarah J. Maas book. Like I can't help myself. I'm actually really, really enjoying this though. It's like the first romance book I've been able to really, really enjoy since reading so much fantasy. So I appreciate that. I think the whole like storyline of this is also really interesting. I think I mentioned it early on, but it kind of gives off like Kardashian vibes and they have cameras following them around 24 7 there's a lot of drama it's just really fun I'm really enjoying it I'm loving Connor and Rose's relationship I feel like you can really feel their love and trust for one another and I think both their characters are super unique and different and I love learning about them and like their little backstories anyways we made a pretty big dent in it yesterday the goal is to finish it up today we're gonna start our timer it seems like as the week goes on I start to pick up my phone more and more and I don't know why? I think that's just a really interesting pattern. I don't know why. But we are gonna keep going. We're gonna see what happens between Rose and Connor. There's definitely a lot of bumps in the road that they're hitting within their relationship in this story that I think is interesting. And I feel like we're also gonna see them hit like some pretty important milestones, but I can feel it. I'm starting to lose my voice again. <laughs> Okay guys, just doing a quick little update. We are at the two hour and 57 minute mark and I've made it to chapter 45, page 372. Things are getting so stinking crazy in this book. I'm not even kidding. That's why I had to like stop and talk to you for a second. I'm loving everything about this so far. I am just like living for the drama, which I can't decide if that sounds like really bad or not, but like the drama and like vibes of this book is just getting me. It almost 
almost kind of reminds me of like Magnolia Parks, but like not Magnolia Parks. But the way I felt about reading Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates is exactly how I feel reading Kiss the Sky. And I guess like with that, it kind of reminds me of Gossip Girl in some type of form. And I'm just like living for it. I think it is so fun and so different and interesting. We just hit like a pretty crazy chapter where it was mostly revolving around Daisy and her current relationship that is just not not good it's not healthy and we were kind of watching as everyone was getting involved and just trying to look out for her and guys i cannot wait to get to daisy and rake's story i just know it's going to be the best one literally living for those two characters right now this book isn't even about them okay this is about rose and connor and i am living for them but there's something about daisy and rake that is just like calling my name and i cannot wait to get to that story but chapter 44 was like a big daisy chapter i feel like and i am just literally loving this story right now and i am living for rose and connor and like their dynamic it's just so beautiful like i love how perfectly they fit together even though they don't seem like they would fit together at the same time they're like literally perfect for each other wanted to give you guys a little update we're gonna keep going we only have this itty bit to go we just finished kiss the sky i'm literally in shock right now this book was crazy to begin with and i've already talked a little bit about all the drama the gossip that happens in it but like what happens at the end of this like the plot twist basically i did not see that coming i did not see that coming one bit and i have to say like the calmness of our characters when this crazy turn of events happens where did they get this calmness from because i couldn't be that calm i'm like literally still processing what i just read i feel like i'm in some weird days right now it kind of happens so fast like the end of it there's something crazy that happens it just like blows over super fast it seems and then we jump into like another really crazy thing and we're kind of just like rushing through it i kind of wish this book was longer and i'm pretty strict when it comes to romance books i like my romance books to be around like 300 to 350 pages i feel like that's the perfect sweet spot for romance this book in total was almost 500 pages with like the bonus epilogue and like all the extra stuff and i honestly kind of wish there was more to it i just feel like there's so much to unpack and i know in the books to come we're probably going to unpack a lot of it even in this book alone i learned so much about lily and lo and i feel like i have better appreciation for those characters now outside of their respective books so i know in the books to come it will probably be the same for rose and connor but like i'm like not okay with how this book kind of went in the end not that i didn't like it no i absolutely ate this book up i loved it this is definitely a four star read for me it was so fun it was so crazy and so different i've never read anything like this before and the closest thing i could really compare it to is definitely magnolia parks i just feel like the drama and gossip girl vibes that we get in magnolia parks is very very similar to this book and i'm excited to see what hot house flower entails i feel like it's going to be kind of similar the drama the gossip the craziness this book is incredible i love it i love rose and connor i love their dynamic their relationship i think their character development was absolutely perfect in this book four stars this was amazing ate it up moving on from this book i was actually debating because i literally just did my february tbr i was debating between jumping in to hot house flower which is book two in the callaway sister series because i actually picked it for my february tbr but i feel like i want to like mix it up a little bit in this vlog i don't want to do too much of the same thing and since we've already read two romances in this video i wanted to mix it up a little bit and throw in a little sprinkle of fantasy so our next book is going to be caraval by stephanie garber if you're not familiar with stephanie garber she is also the author of the once upon a broken heart series which don't get me started guys i'm still thinking about that series it's still one of my favorite favorite series to come out of 2023 caraval is actually a trilogy that takes place before for that series and technically if you're going in to this universe you're supposed to start with the caraval trilogy first and then jump into once upon a broken heart a lot of people say that caraval isn't as good as once upon a broken heart it's not their favorite fantasy ever but because i enjoyed that series so much and i enjoyed stephanie garber as an author i really wanted to 
give Caraval a try and kind of jump into the universe again. I want to get the backstory on it all. I know we're going to revisit some characters that are from Once Upon a Broken Heart. I thought it'd be really fun to jump into it, kind of revisit the world and see where it all starts and comes from. But I do know we have a little bit over an hour left to read for the day. I think it's like an hour and 20 maybe. So I thought we would start this tonight, kind of jump into it, see what it's all about. I don't know too much about it to be completely honest. The series mainly revolves around two sisters, but that's like literally all I know. So with that being said, we are going to hop right into the magical world of Caraval. This book has a lot to live up to, but this may come as a shock to you guys, but it's actually like four days later. <laughs> Basically, we made it all the way to Friday, but I didn't talk to you guys on Friday. I think on Thursday, I may have mentioned to you guys very briefly that I was not feeling well. I had actually not been feeling well that entire week. I think I like caught something maybe at hockey or whatever, but I was not feeling well. And then Friday, it just hit me. It hit me like a Bus, guys I was so sick and just so tired and out of it so Friday I literally stayed in bed all day just kind of sleeping coming in and out of it but I did end up reading still but for Friday our reading time was five hours and 39 minutes and what was really crazy about it is that my most used app was YouTube with an hour and 23 minutes which I think I already talked about but it's like not that bad in my eyes if I'm on YouTube for that long because I'm just like watching YouTube videos I'm watching other booktubers my my second most used app though was TikTok with an hour and one minute and that that was the culprit right there was TikTok. I can't believe I spent a whole hour on TikTok and then we have 51 minutes on Instagram, 25 minutes on messages and so on and so forth. So we read for five hours and 39 minutes. I literally had like two or three chapters left and I ended up saving it until yesterday to finish up. So I didn't end up finishing it. I think if I wasn't so sick, I probably would have been able to finish it Friday, but I was just like going in and out of sleep. I was reading super slow. Anyways, we're here now. I'm feeling a lot better. This is book one in the series and wow. Wow, wow, wow. I missed Stephanie Garber's writing style. I missed it so much. I actually really, really enjoyed it. I love this whole universe and I love like the magic behind it all. Not like my all time favorite. Like I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, but I still like really enjoyed it as its own series and its own adventure. I'm actually really excited to jump into book two, which is legendary because I think that's like tell a story. And I think Jack's comes into that. This was so fun. It was witty. It was magical. It was shocking at times. There was definitely a lot of moments where I was like, oh, I did not see that coming. I think I'm going to land on a three star rating. I just feel like in comparison to the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, it definitely isn't like my favorite. If I'm not thinking about that series and I'm just looking at Caraval as Caraval, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute. I think it's a really fun and witty fantasy. I do have to say, I think Scarlet it was like kind of annoying at some points. I still really enjoyed it. Yes, I would recommend it, especially as like an intro to fantasy. I feel like this was super easy going and fun. I feel like we read some pretty fun and good books in today's video. Two really fun romances. We added a fantasy in there. I'm so happy we made it through it though because we did end up spending so much less time on our phones this week and it really made such a difference, especially when it comes to like my mental health. I feel like if I'm on my phone for a super long time, my mental health just tanks but spending the whole week kind of like off my phone and reading again I felt so happy aside from me being super sick I felt so much better and we also got me out of that horrible horrible reading slump like I felt like I was never gonna get out of it and now I feel like I'm ready to go and start like going through my physical TBR again this video ended up being pretty successful I literally just tried to show you guys the sunset but like the camera doesn't do it justice but it's so beautiful that is all for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you had fun. You made it this far. Comment down below who your favorite couple is from the Addicted series slash Callaway Sister series. I'm just loving Daisy and Wright, guys. I don't know why, but I'm loving them so, so much right now. Also comment down below what type of videos you guys want to see from me on my channel. If there's like a different type of reading style vlog you guys want to see from me, let me know down below because I'm looking for some fun new ways to tackle my physical TBR this year. But I love you guys so, so much and I'll see you in my next video.